So, what do I need to do today? Wake up at 5.30, read a book, do yoga, have breakfast, film a video, write a script for a new video, found music and sound effect for a video, go shopping, go to the government, answer all emails, go to a language class, cook some food and sleep. Whew, pretty intense task list, isn't it? Actually not for me, because I'm here to share some wisdom I collected in years of my productivity journey, some time management tips that changed my life for the better. But before, a quick disclaimer. Now I'm working three days per week and all other time I have I can dedicate to my own projects. I don't have 9 to 5 job 5 days per week, I don't have kids or people I need to care about. So if something is not resonating with your journey, you can skip this part. All time codes will be in the description down below. So now let's get started. Deep focus mode. We are all very different personalities and what is working for me might not work for you at the same time. But I prefer deep focus mode much better than to divide my work time into chunks. Like for example, in Pomodoro method, when you use 20 minute uh, chunks of time, with the five minute breaks in between. For me, deep focusing mode starts somewhere at 20 minutes of my continuous work and I can work for one hour, one hour and a half, sometimes two hours with no breaks. For me, this deep focus mode is much more efficient and much more productive than to divide it to some chunks. But it's only working when you work with no distractions. Just leave your phone somewhere in another room or in a cabinet or put it on a plain mode so you can be focused as much as you can. Set your priorities. I was always a person who uh, bites more than really can chew. I had so many projects and so many hobbies I want to try, fitness goals, uh, different activities, businesses, and like, <laughs> when in the world <laughs> we can have time for all that? And in the end of the day I was sitting in front of my journal with all that tasks listed and even if I crossed three or four of them I should be happy, but I was not satisfied at all because it was not all what I want. But not only the time was a problem, I was lacking the energy for all of that. So I started to set priorities for all my tasks. I have two, three things in a day that I cannot skip and without them my day will feel really shitty. Things like working in a flower shop, doing my business on YouTube, doing some sports sessions, something big, difficult, but in the end really rewarding. Something that if I accomplish this day I will feel really motivated. This gives me a cheap boost of motivation, but it works. Now all my priorities are set up like this. Work in the flower shop, doing my YouTube work, uh, including editing, filming, making scripts and other additional things, doing my yoga sessions, uh, learning German, talking with my friends, family and spend some quality time with them, get enough education about filming, editing, some finances and other stuff, get enough proper sleep and relax, and in the end my hobbies and other side projects that I want to do. If I accomplish first three things from this list, I will call it a day. You know, because I believe that we don't have time, we make time. And this life is all about priorities and not about how to squeeze everything I want in just 24 hours time. Schedule some leisure time. For me personally, work goes so much smoother and much more productive when I know that after I have some scheduled leisure time just for myself. The time when I can, without any guilt, watch YouTube videos or cook something nice for myself or go out with meeting my friends and other things. I started to schedule some free time in my time frame and this helped really my productivity and my mental health. I can really work on one task for 10-11 hours without any break if the task is really interesting, but after some time I feel really unmotivated and maybe I work for like 50% of my capacity. And what's the point to work 50% if you can schedule some free time chunks and after regain this energy back? Plan next day the day before. As easy as it can be, I do plan all my tasks in the evening the day before. I'm all into this movement of decreasing decision fatigue, so when the day starts, I'm ready to go. If you're interested in me making a video about decreasing decision fatigue, write me in the comments. This is one of the best thing I know about increasing creative energy. Two days rule. This is really obvious, but when you start to implement a new habit or a new repeated task every day and you suddenly skip one day, you need to remember that you are allowed to skip only one day, but not two days in a row. 
This is a really nice thing for those days when you feel so down and unmotivated that you better skip a task. But at the same time, it's really rewarding exercise because you're not falling into this hole of guilt, skipping one day after two, after three, after a week, and you just ended up not doing it. So remember, if you want to stick with a habit or implement something new in your life, only skip one day in a row. Two minutes rule. This maybe it's even more obvious than the previous one, but I cannot skip because this works for me perfectly. This tip comes from one of my favorite self-improvement books, Getting Things Done by David Allen. The rule seems so easy. Just if the task takes less than two minutes, do it immediately. And this saves your energy from making all the choices. Do I need to wash my uh, plate now or later? Shall I make my bed in the morning or in the afternoon? Let's just save up our mental energy for more important things. The task takes exactly that amount of time you dedicate to it. Many people often overestimate how long the task will take. This is called Parkinson law. The amount of work will expand to fill all the time available for its completion. This means if you give yourself one week to complete a two-hour task, your task, psychologically speaking, will become much more complex to fill up all that week. But what we can do to beat this Parkinson law? First of all, you need to know your working speed. For some people, the same task will take one day to complete, then for others it may take three hours. For example, now I edit my videos three days, <laughs> but I know that for other YouTubers it maybe take five, six hours. And it really depends on your knowledge and education. What is really helps me to beat this Parkinson law is to assume what is the bare minimum this task can take and after add 50% more to this task. For example, if we talk about making a script for this video, the script, I assume, will take one hour to make, including research. So one hour plus 50% of this one hour is 30 minutes. So I will end up using one hour and a half for making a script for this video. This thing really helps me to escape Parkinson law, and at the same time, I don't underestimate my skills, giving myself too little time to complete the task. Set your defaults. This thing I picked up from Alice Abdal videos where he is talking about your default settings. For example, if you have a chunk of free time, what you would do by default? Open an Instagram and start scrolling or open a book. I change my default settings such as when I have a chunk of free time, I would rather go and read a book or call my family than to go to YouTube or Instagram. When I'm going shopping, I never go with an empty stomach and this saves a lot of money. Also, when I go to sleep, I pick up my journal and plan the next day, the day before. You can set your own default setting. It can be something really beneficial, like for example, when I start to work, I leave my phone in another room. It's much easier to fill up uh, the gaps that you have with scrolling on TikTok or Instagram when you're bored, but you can easily reprogram your mindset to be more consistent and useful. Give yourself fake deadlines. I call it a deadline before a deadline. So we're here today. If I have a deadline, for example in two weeks, I will put a fake deadline in one week, so I'm forced to finish my task faster. If I have a deadline in less than one week, I will divide the rest time to halves and put my fake deadline somewhere in the middle. Maybe after I can add some additional changes, but the main chunk of my work will be done before a deadline. This saves me a lot of nerve cells and I can't recommend that enough. So this is it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you became inspired from this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to become the best version of yourself. I do videos about self-improvement, learning and how I hack this life for myself. Also, you can write your own personal time management tips and share them in the comments so we all can become a better version of ourselves. I wish you a great day full of motivation and productivity and see you next week. Bye.